in this video we are going to follow up from our um, introductory look at um, development feasibility and residual land values and we're going to look at the um, two ways of working out um, development feasibility and land values. Um, so in the first uh, couple of videos we looked at the detailed cash flow version of Circa uh, and we made reference to the abbreviated model but we didn't actually look at that. Let's just go back and have a very quick recap of where we got to uh, before by clicking on this button here. It takes us to the content section of the detailed cash flow version and we looked at development address we made some choices about the type of property that we wanted to have and then we used the online tools to try and uh, assess a market value for the property. So let's just click on to, uh, to that section there. Um, so um, it, we arrived at a market value for a four bedroom detached house in this particular location by using the uh, online tools here. And then we um, looked at the um, um, the summary of our choices in terms of the development um, outline, and these were our costs. This is a, an assessment that the model um, has for developer's profit, um, and as you can see, we can we can go to some we can go to the detail of that and make some changes uh, if we think this is um, unreasonable. Um, and that left us with a budget to buy the land or a an idea of how much the land would be worth as a land as somebody who wanted to sell the land. So we then followed this through here by clicking on here. We then went through to a, a summary page which we described um, which we said was a, the residual land value summary. Um, and this is um, uh, uh, not untypical of what you would see a uh, professional surveyor or somebody in development uh, uh, using. And the, the one thing to note at this stage before we look at the abbreviated model is that none of the um, uh, options here you can uh, are editable. So all these um, we can hover over all all of these all these costs here, and we can see that we can follow these through. Uh, to underline data so and that's where the changes can be made so this literally is a summary page of uh, options that have been um, uh, decisions that have been made elsewhere that's the that's the uh, market value these are the uh, summary of the costs here and then that's our budget there for acquiring the land or the budget for uh, for selling the land um, so um, uh, one thing to, to to just make a note of here is this this section here called construction finance costs uh, and finance um, uh, fees because um, we're going to look at that in terms of um, the abbreviated model which we're going to look at now. So let's just leave that for now. Let's find our way back to the front cover page and let's go down to the abbreviated appraisal. So the first thing we see is that it's actually um, got a very similar um, uh, feeling to it in terms of we have a section here for the value of, of the, the, the estimated value of a completed project and then we have our costs and then that leaves us with a budget for acquiring the land. So um, the first thing to note here is that there are, this page here um, is is a summary but it, you can also edit the details here so we can look at here we can see all these grey boxes we can make some uh, adjust, adjustments to the estimate on this page so um, that's that's the, 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 the main difference is that this this particular model um, has just the one page and the details can be edited on that one page whereas our Circa um, cash flow model has around 18 sections with subsections to those where uh, a lot more detail can be made and, and more um, and we can we can delve into some of the assumptions in uh, in in, uh, in in more detail so if we just look here we can see that there's a line here for professional fees and we've got a model estimate here and it looks fairly similar to the one we've already had. If we think that that um, is not quite right, we can make uh, uh, changes 
um, here and uh, the database uh, assumptions are removed and our adjustments are made. So let's just go back to the, um, the, the database option that was already included. And if we scroll down um, from professional fees and we look down, we can see here a line that says professional fees interest on two-thirds development period. Now, so the model has calculated a potential development period here of 11 months to build a, um, a four-bed detached house. Um, uh, and again, that can be updated. We can make, we can, we can change those here. Um, and the calculation on interest is made by by reference to just the, this particular period and take into account just a, a fraction of that. Um, if we go back to uh, the circa cash flow model, what we can see um, happens here is we have all of these options, all these detailed costs and then that brings us down to a cash flow. So this is a very detailed cash flow where all the costs and options uh, find them, will find their way to eventually and um, we can scroll down to the bottom we can find um, a, uh, a, a uh, an abbreviated version or, or a printer friendly version which we'll look at in a second but this is our land acquisition budget uh, and we we can follow that through to our uh, residual land value page there and then we can follow it back to our cash flow and let's just take a look at the printer friendly version so we can see um, that these are the summary headings of all of our um, detailed um, uh, sections and um, they will find themselves um, in a um, uh, being allocated according to the time frame in which they are, in, are incurred or are assessed to be incurred. So in the next uh, couple of videos we'll look at um, the timing of development and we'll look at um, the Gantt chart that's uh, built into this model um, that helps with um, allocating costs according to the time impact and we can see here for example that um, the um, when we buy the land um, we buy it up front and then there is a period of time when we have to uh, allow for the interest on holding the land even before any works have started and we've started to incur some serious costs in terms of construction work and the land interest is charged um, throughout the period of time uh, but the interest on the um, construction costs and the professional fees is incurred in stages as, as the costs go incrementally up and then we get to a point where we um, uh, generate some revenue by selling the property and then we can repay back our loans uh, so this is a visual representation of that during the early stages um, we can see that our expenditure is low and this will mainly be interest on land and then it picks up as work starts to take place and we start to incur some professional fees and also we get on site and then there's a, a flattened out period here where we've allowed for a, a void period perhaps the property hasn't been sold and after it's been finished straight away or there's a delay in um, completing um, uh, legal completion before we can receive the money and the project becomes hopefully positive again. Um, so you can see that really um, having a detailed cash flow does make a big difference in terms of the way that you assess the feasibility of a project um, and that a, um, the, the um, model that we've allowed, the abbreviated model, um, is useful. Um, it allows for uh, the initial estimates of much bigger uh, projects um, and it's more than likely to be of interest to um, uh, larger, sort of smaller to medium sized property developers or professionals advising them or landowners who believe that they have um, or they could generate some planning permission for a large development. So that's, um, that's a very quick introduction to um, the differences between the two models that we have within, within Circa Home Developer and the next time we're going to look at the um, impact of time on um, some of the costs that um, uh, we could incur in developing uh, a property.